Hi, I'm Tangie Harper. I'm a dancer, choreographer, teaching artist in Chicago, um, artistic director of the Happiness Club, and um, artistic manager of Story Catchers Theater. Hey, I'm Rick Wilson. Um, I'm a tour musician, a writer, um, activist, uh, dancer. Mm -hmm. um, Learner. Lyricist. Learner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. All things. If you're going to teach it, you got to be open to learning about it. You mm -hmm. can't teach it if you're not open to learning about it. Yeah. yeah. And like, how big is it? Hip hop is a mosh pit of a whole bunch of different American music styles, mm -hmm. you know? It's got jazz in it. People borrow from country. Like, the coldest producers thumb through records and find samples from mm -hmm. all different kinds of music. And so being a music lover is a huge part of it because when it first started happening, my dad hated it. He was just like, they stole this from this. He was like telling me every record they took something from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, as it grew, and we get through the 90s and a lot of it, like Q-Tip is one of his favorites now because Q-Tip is like a purist. Dude will go find the cleanest of the cleans of all the drum tracks he can find and manipulate it and turn it to something completely different. He's one of the rawest producers ever. Mm. It's a lot of them like that. Like um, Pete Rock is cold. Like it's a lot of DJs that have turned into producers based off of their ability to spin records the way that they could and mm. find those sounds. Mm -hmm. So that part of it too, that's another art, you know, mm. that we don't want to get lost. Yeah. And that's and that teachers should, should know, know about. about. <laughs> I will respect that it is youth driven. That means the new trends that come out are coming from those young people and that deserves respect too. So if you're gonna be somebody that's a practitioner or somebody that's teaching it, you gotta be willing to learn as much as you are willing to quote unquote teach. And if you don't know nothing about it, your whole approach to it has to be in conjunction with those students. Because A, you have to research and learn in order to teach them about the history of it, because you don't know it. And then in order to help them create and cultivate, you gotta get into what they're into, which means you gotta defer to them, because you don't know what drill is. You don't know what they are talking about. You don't even know what the current slang is right now. Mm -hmm. So you have to become part student, part research, mm -hmm. part mentor, part collaborator in order to teach, especially if you're not coming straight from the culture. Like mm -hmm. all of those things are relative, yeah, yeah. which I feel like is something you naturally do because you are an appreciator. You're not an appropriator. You never have been. So that comes naturally to you. So it's the same way in that you respect opera and you respect classical instruments. It's the same way you have to respect what hip hop is and that it's ever changing because whoever is coming up in the culture is going to change it. Mm -hmm. And they're going to borrow from what was old before and think it's new, but they're going to constantly <laughs> be creating mm -hmm. right. and changing it. And that's the respect part. I'm not I'm not against the whole there's so many things at your fingertips now with Google and documentaries and YouTubes and all of that I think the more of that you can consume and even use it for teaching skills like pulling up those videos and showing young yeah. people those different things because there's so much stuff out here now that that is a wonderful resource but as an educator if you don't know the origin of hip-hop if you don't know you know what state gets the credit for that if you don't even know that new york stole it from jamaica and block parties like mm -hmm. if you don't like little stuff if you don't know the elements of hip-hop if you don't know the pioneers and like who kicked this whole thing off should you be teaching yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you should you should kind of like i mean definitely try to figure out the you should learn the roots <laughs> you know <laughs> Before you get like, yeah, 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 and no it. pun intended, but like, what if you don't even know that the Roots yeah, 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 yeah. exist yeah. as a, the only hip hop band? Like, yeah, that's like history right there, and they are legendary. It's mm -hmm. like there's certain things that, in order for you to pass on the information, you kind of have to have some of it also. And I'm, again, I'm not against you learning as you go, especially if you're a visitor to the culture. That I, I would appreciate it if you're consistently learning about it as you're teaching it because you don't inherently notice stuff. You didn't necessarily grow up with it in your house and outside your neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, being being intentional about the information that you're intaking mm -hmm. and what you're giving back and respectful about where all of that comes from. That's my main thing about it. That's the difference between appreciation and appropriation. Yeah, and then, like, you can, then I feel like with that, you can kind of make a lot of stuff relatable to mm -hmm. now too. Absolutely. I mean? Yeah, I think that'd be cool to like do kind of things like that.
what does NWA and G Herbal have in common? Okay. Other than what people perceive about them, but like, yes. what do they actually have in common? What do they core, actually where they have come in common? From? And like, and then I think that's, I think stuff like that would be really, really cool. Those are see. huge conversations. I think another starters. thing that was really dope for me when I was like younger, I was, a, I was a Freedom School like baby, so. Like people, they would have people that this specified in certain things come and facilitate certain workshops. And I think some of the cool things I've seen with doing like like uh, like just like any like like hip hop workshop, anything was just different creatives coming in and showing mm -hmm. people like you know what I mean their ways or their process or like this is how I like make a beat or this is how you know I DJ. This is mm -hmm. like you know what I mean I think that'd be really that'd be really cool. I mean, and if you can just you know, find people do that the goodness of their heart or you know whatever, but I think that'd be really cool. I wish I would have, wish I was younger and, and saw somebody show me how to DJ, you mm -hmm. know, because I, mean? I feel like maybe I might have been a DJ, and not, not even been like a rapper. That's an effective tool, like teaching young people and showing them like working professionals doing what it is that they are interested in doing is tangible evidence that they can say, do it too. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the that's the rub on that. Like that's the same thing we did with After School Matters. Like when I was there. <laughs> Yes, I was your main instructor and I'm teaching you dance primarily, but every week I brought in a different guest instructor because I don't want you to just be good at dancing like me, mm -hmm. which I have a thing, you know, like I have a style, like after you dance with me for a little while, you know what I'm gonna do before I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm on, like, you know, I'm gonna hit something, yeah. but learning from other people makes you versatile. Like that means I can get in front of JC, I can get in front of Brandy, like I can get in front of anybody yeah. and learn from anybody. That's what keeps you like competitive mm -hmm. and comparable to whatever else is happening in your culture or in mm -hmm. your set, like mm -hmm. commercially even. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna get out here and compete and audition with people, I gotta be able to learn from whoever steps in front of me. Gotcha. So the more people that you learn from, the more, the more shit you got in your bucket, I think. Gotcha. The more things you can pull from. Mm -hmm. Like I have this style, I got this technique, I know how to do this thing, I know how to learn this. The more you teach these young people, the better off they become. With rapping, like rapping, I mean, rapping is rap is poetry, mm -hmm. rapping is songwriting. Mm -hmm. So just dial into that more and try to write some mm -hmm. raps. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> try to write some raps, you know what I mean? Just rapping poetry. Uh, you know what I mean? I think um, I wouldn't say try to break dance if you can't do it. No, you still yeah, that's fucking shit it. up. But it. I think, I don't know, I don't know. I always say what you can't do, bring somebody else in. Tell yes. Me. To help you, what you can't do, bring somebody else in. I just don't say. You know what I mean? That's the like, best thing you could possibly do is find a guest instructor. Mm -hmm or some sort of a documentary that you can play that day, a video of somebody really mad, like Nas has a master class right now that you can find clips of, and we yeah, just talks yeah, about how he true, writes. Yeah. There's a lot of those master classes out there, so use your, use your resources, use your technology, the videos at your disposal, but find the professionals that are good at what they're doing pulling in people that have the expertise that you don't. It's the same thing I do with dance. I, I can footwork for about eight counts. <laughs> <laughs> that means class is over. After yeah, one, yeah, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, I'm tired and I'm done. I done taught you how to irk and jerk and dribble. I don't know no more. So I'm gonna go get paws. You feel me? Like I'm gonna go get a little bit yeah. or I'm gonna go get paws mm -hmm. and I'm gonna bring them in and let them wear you out for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, use your resources, network with people who do have the capability of teaching what you don't. At the same time, you learn. One thing I know my students love is if I do call pause and that man comes to teach, they love seeing my old ass in the back trying to learn everything that they're learning. <laughs> yeah, with them. Mm -hmm. So don't ever think that you have become part of not the lesson. Mm -hmm. Bring somebody in and then you're not tuned in as well. Like, be the student when you need to be the student as well. We're not, we're not dead. We can always learn more, you know? So that's part of it. Then like, you know, you can find like, oh, man, you can find like uh, like graffiti artists. You know what yep. I mean? Like, I think these things would be really cool and they make the class interesting. Too. Definitely. That'd be, that'd be lit, you know what I mean? Definitely. Man, this math class born as hell, but I heard, we heard we got graffiti artists in the next <laughs> right. When I go to music class, we're doing this, 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 this and this. Bust. He finished showing us yep. how I like graffiti yeah. and it teaches us the history of how he got into graffiti. Yeah. Oh, DJ, that is so powerful. Find you, you a know DJ, what I mean? bring some turntables yeah. in, let them mess around with that yeah. a little bit and see what it's like to drop that on the one. It's hard to do. It's harder than you think. Yeah. <laughs> it's harder than you think, like spinning around, letting it go on the one. Mm -hmm. yes. People be having no rhythm. It's so, so funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's, a, that's... Bring in a quote-unquote mumble rapper, with, like, in, bring in, like, a motherfucking rap like me in. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think all of these are different. But, yeah, that's what I did. I, yeah. went, I was trying I tried to learn every other... I tried to learn and, like, study and appreciate every aspect of it so I yeah. can be the best version of this. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that'd be, yeah, my advice. Yeah, man.